Hey there. So today I spent, I don't know, countless hours, number of hours, trying to work out some issues with Aweber, which I haven't really used that much. And I came across quite a few little tricks and tips, which I haven't really, uh, I couldn't really find before, before I went down this rabbit hole. So through some quick Google searching and YouTube searching, I didn't find the solution. So I have decided to record a quick video to help anyone else that's in a similar sort of position that, that I was in earlier. And uh, so today we're gonna go through some common issues with Aweber and Zapier, or API in general, but in this example, we'll use Zapier. And, uh, and setting up Aweber so that you can add emails uh, from that you're collecting from other methods, you know, from course signups, from website form uh, entries or whatever you have. Here are some of the, the errors that I got today. So uh, email address blocked, was an error that it told me in, in Zapier. Another one was the email address provided cannot be accepted at this time. And another one was uh, was getting the confirmation emails, uh, sorting out confirmation emails being sent when I actually didn't want them to be sent. And even though I changed the settings. So there's some so there's some tricks that, that I found out and I had to talk to Aweber for a few hours to try and to get to the bottom of this. And it was a real pain. So I hope you can benefit from this as well. So let's start with the most common or well, the first error that I got, which was email address blocked. This is how it looked. So I had my zap. I looked at my zap history for this zap, which, which had an error coming in. So I'm getting the details from uh, Thinkific uh, for a course on Thinkific, one of my clients, and then taking the email address and getting it into Aweber. Now, the problem with the email address you can see here is that it starts with support at, and it's not a person's email address. And so this, so they actually give you a clue. In this case, Aweber gives you a nice clue. The problem is here with a, a URL. Basically, it says that the email address is blocked and wh why it's blocked is an Aweber requirement, which is this one. So why is my email address blocked? These are the different reasons. Essentially, in short, it's because the email address uh, has asked to be blocked, potentially. Uh, or there's some issue, um, you know, with with that particular email address in in the past. But in the case of Zapier, the most common, and it's it's the case with any kind of API integration that you might that you might have you, using uh, with Aweber, and it's that it's a role based email address. So it's an email address which is coming in, which starts with, you know, one of these common generic names: info at, contact at, support at, etc. Anything like this where it's not, it's obviously not an individual person will be blocked by Aweber and they won't accept it. So that'll come up as an error in Zapier. It explains the reasons why, but in short, as they explain here, it's because usually there's a lot of spam complaints because a lot of people are using these inboxes in certain companies. So they just have this as a general rule for Aweber. I don't know if that's good or bad, um, but that's the rule for Aweber. So that's the way it is. That's the first. So that's email address is blocked error. The second error is that email address provided cannot be accepted at this time. This one really got me, got me stuck. And uh, I'll show you how it looks. Same sort of thing. So in in uh, Aweber, in sorry in Zapier, the Aweber step, the error says this app returned the email address provided cannot be accepted at this time, and it doesn't tell you anything else. That's all it says kind of annoying. These links won't help you because they're Zapier links. And there's not really any information when I Google search this didn't really come up. And, uh, you know, maybe this is well known amongst people using Aweber a lot. But because I haven't really used Aweber before for myself or for clients, uh, this was new for me at this time. So uh, yeah, well, let me show you what what the reasons are I discovered, you know, I talked I talked with Aweber, and I also did further research and discovered that there are sort of three reasons that this error might be showing. And it could be a combination of all of these, or it could be just one. So one, one example, one problem could be that you're attempting, uh, you've been attempting many uh, zaps, testing the zaps, you know, testing the, the automation and sending ser seri a series of emails through uh, to, a, to one address or to multiple similar addresses in a short amount of time. And so Aweber, it's very protective and just blocks all of them. 
Uh, it could be because the emails are all, you might be trying to use different emails, but all the emails are coming from the same IP, you know, from your, from your location. So, you know, you can, you can offset that by using different IP address, using a VPN, or using something else to test potentially. Um, and then the third is the email has numbers in it. So this is also what I was doing. I was testing different emails using the same email, but then adding, uh, you know, plus one, plus two, plus three to that email, to that email address so that I could test a different person, you know, so it wouldn't just be replacing or updating the same email address. That also triggers a spam uh, awareness, I guess, by Aweber and blocks. So all of these three things, any of these three things, and maybe other similar things that look like spam kind of behavior, Aweber will block and then it won't really tell you why. So these are the reasons. So if you just try using a human sounding email address, you know, john at yourdomain.com or whatever it is, that will probably work. So you can try that. And then the third thing, which I wanted to mention while we're here, is sending confirmation emails. In, Z in Aweber, you can turn on or off confirmation emails, I'll show you. So when you go into list options, list settings, and then you go to confirmation message, you can see here the confirmation message is the double opt-in message which goes and down here in confirmation message settings, you can actually turn off the confirmation for Aweber sign up forms. So this basically means that when someone signs up, they won't get an email which asks them for a double opt-in. In general for email marketing, this is good practice to have a double opt-in because you know you get a confirmation that that email address is the correct email address, that it's working, that it's a real person, uh, it's not a spam bot or hopefully not and you know that those emails are probably gonna be delivered, which will help your deliverability, which will help your email campaigns. The, um, in this case though, for, for this particular case, we're sending a few different emails from different lists, but at the same time when the user has already opted in on another platform, and so we can potentially turn this off. So I can tick this, turn it off. You sure you wanna turn it off? Yes. And then I can save this but what was happening was I would continue, the emails would continue to still send with a double opt-in. And so once someone had signed up, they would still get the email. And it turns out Aweber will always continue to send double opt-in when it's coming from Zapier or coming from an API. So when you're sending, when you're sending confirmation emails, it will keep sending confirmation emails even after you've turned off the settings in Aweber. And the only way you can actually turn it off for, for your particular case, you know, is by asking Aweber through a support request to turn it off, help, and then putting in a request or you can call them or, you know, chat to them. So that's the only way you can do it. Otherwise, it will keep sending, as long as you're using Zapier, it, it will probably keep sending that uh, second message, that opt-in for the email. So that's really uh, useful to know. I hope it's useful for you because I wish I knew this already as well. <laughs> it would have saved me quite a few hours. Uh, let me know if it's been useful, if it's anything else you'd like to learn and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Okay, thanks for watching. Cheers.